sounds like you just spent ten days up here, eh? The only thing I forgot was a towel! Woo! Shower ascent of El... My windproof fillet. Now you'll notice my portal edge here has a slightly faded picture of Wee Wee, the big wall crab. Wee Wee is my ever present partner. He rides right here. Ha! Ah, hi! I'm Wee Wee, the big wall crab. Let's go climbing! <gasps> so, this is Wee Wee on my portal edge. You may notice that my portal edge bears a slight resemblance to the Canadian flag, but I wish to assure you that this re resemblance is entirely coincidental, eh? Well, they say that you're supposed to listen to the sound of a piton as you drive it. And as the pitch changes, you know it's going in. When the pitch stops changing, that's when you're supposed to quit hammering. Because you don't want to overdrive that piton. Of course, when you're soloing and you just did a long traverse and you're scared, you give it a few extra whacks anyway. we go. Nothing like a good overdriven, sawed off stubby, eh? Today, starting out on hooks. However, you miss this exciting free climbing where I actually had to free climb from there to here. Personally, I've retired from free climbing. Unfortunately though, when I soloed Iron Hawk a year and a half ago, and I came to obligatory 510 moves 20 feet above the last piece of pro, I kind of had to come out of retirement. But hopefully I can return. This handy dandy little device called a rope ratchet. You hook it in, you crank it down a bit, and you can gently ease on to the piece. Keeping your finger on the hook, And tightening up on the ratchet. Kind of interesting to be standing on a little curved piece of metal with your toes dangling. 2,500 feet above the void. Because I could drop something here, like my breakfast if I got really scared, and it wouldn't hit anything all the way to the bottom. What would Chuck Heston do now? He would unhook the hooks from his rack that are hosing him, so we can stand on the second step. Oh. These rivet hangers are the bitchinest things because they cinch right down. Then you just get it. You grab the rope ratchet. You clip it in. And up you go. Now you will notice 
that I am climbing with a two to one mechanical advantage. And some will say, past the Pitons, Pete Zabrock did not actually climb El Cap, he merely winched his way up. And to that I would say, like you're right, eh? There's got to be a hole. Well, there's got to be a way. Got a hook here, possibly a hook there, and another beautiful, beautiful rivet right up there. shock will be taken up by the bungee cord. Cool idea, eh? Not one of my ideas, though. Just another one of Chongo's. Chuck Chongo Tucker. Big wall rider. Idio Saval. Friend and mentor. Taught me most everything I know about climbing. After I soloed Iron Hawk and came down, told him about some of my problems. We had a quick little tutorial in the parking lot. This junk out of the way. Suddenly, I can stand on the top step with impunity. Never was such opportunity to go climbing with impunity. What the pendulum is, to get the exactly correct amount of rope out, which is why the gree gree is very nice, get the rope ratchet ready. We don't want to work any harder than we have to. Here's try number one. You missed. I really could have done that, but you know, I just, you know, did it for the TV, eh? Oh yeah, what a catch, what a catch. Is it a good hook placement? Well, when you're doing this off a rivet, you don't care too much. Ah, the sound of progress. Now, of course, the trick is to get over without the hook careening off. It is only rated for 150 pounds, and something tells me that if the angle between that and that is greater than 120 degrees, I will load it more. Then one body weight. Okay, so now I'm in this perplexing dilemma. I can see that once I start rotating, 